In Jesus' name we pray. Um, pray for everyone who has been infected with COVID-19. That God may heal them. Pray for those who have already died so that their whole, pray that their souls might may be in heaven. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now we will move on to our hymn book, GHS 260. GHS 260. Gracious Spirit, dwell with me. Gracious Spirit, dwell with me. I myself will gracious be, and with words that help and heal, with a life in mind reveal, and with action bold and meek, who for Christ my Savior speak. Truthful Spirit, Dwell with me, I myself will truthful be, and with wisdom, kind and clear, let thy life and mine appear, and with actions brotherly speak, and love sincerity. Tender spirit, dwell with me, I myself will tender be, shut my heart up like a flower, in temptations, that song hour, open it when shine that song, and it's loved by fragrance own. Mighty spirit, dwell with me. I myself 
will mighty be, mighty so as to prevail, where unaided man must fail, ever by a mighty host, pressing on and bearing all. Holy Spirit, dwell with me. I myself will holy be, separate from sin. I will choose and cherish all things good. And whatever I can be, give to him who gave me be.
Okay, reading. And, uh, tomorrow's Bible study. Now it is time for praise and worship.
Aleluia.
Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify, that after the most straightest sect of our religion I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, 
to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am except these bonds. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up, and the governor, and Bernice, and they that sat with them. And when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, This man doeth nothing worthy of death, or of bonds. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. Acts 27. And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band. And entering into a ship of Adramitium, we launched meaning to sail by the coasts of Asia one Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And the next day we touched at Zidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. And when we had launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. And there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy and he put us therein. And when we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over against Nidus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete over against Salmoni, and hardly passing it, came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh whereunto was the city of Lycia. Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them, and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenice and there to winter, which is an haven of Crete and lieth toward the southwest and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocladon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, strake sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship, and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, 
for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and, lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit we must be cast upon a certain island. But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country, and sounded, and found it twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again, and found it fifteen fathoms. Then, fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern, and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea, under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. And we were in all in the ship two hundred three score and sixteen souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded, if it were possible, to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea, and loosed the rudder bands, and hoised up the mainsail to the wind, and made toward shore. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land, and the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. May God help us to be doers of the world. Amen.
The healer awaits you. The Libra awaits you. And the one that will bless your life and bless your family awaits you today in Jesus' name. It's going to be a great day for me. I said for me. It's going to be a great day in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for our time together here today. Thank you for this special worship. Thank you for our members. Thank you for our invitees, our friends who are here today. I pray, Lord, today, everyone will have a taste of your power in Jesus' name. Whatever it is you have raised us up for, coming to this world, we pray, Lord, that today we'll see the beginning of a great fulfillment in every life in Jesus' name. As your people enter, into the city of refuge, protection for everyone, preservation for everyone, salvation for everyone, deliverance for everyone, dominion for everyone in Jesus' name. Bless your people today and feel every cup to overflowing. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Deuteronomy chapter 33, I'm reading from verse 27. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27. The eternal God is thy refuge. And underneath thee are the everlasting arms. He shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heavens shall drop down dew. Also your heavens shall drop down dew. <laughs> Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy hell, and who is the sword of thy excellency, thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. The Lord is assuring us today that he is the everlasting King of kings, everlasting Lord of lords, and is the everlasting God, eternal God, and he is a refuge, our hiding place. It tells us in Psalm 46. Psalm 46, reading from verse 1. In Psalm 46, reading from verse 1, God is our refuge and strength. God is your refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, will we not fear? Anybody afraid there? Therefore, will you not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof? There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is the midst of her. Our God is mightily present here today. Our God is by your side over there. Any problem, any challenge, he'll roll away in Jesus' name. And more than rolling problems away, he'll fulfill his will in your life in Jesus' name. You heard about Josiah. It had been prophesied more than 300 years before he came to this world. And what was determined by God concerning him was fulfilled. You are not an accident in the world. You are not an accident on earth. You are not an accident in the church. God brought you here so that 
his will for you before you were born that will will be fulfilled in jesus name you need him as savior you need him as protector and you need him as the one that will fulfill every sin that you had ordained for your life and you will in jesus name verse 5 god is in the midst of her she shall not be moved god shall help her and that right early your help has come the heathen reached and the kingdoms were moved he uttered his voice the earth melted the lord of hosts is with us the lord of hosts is with me the god of jacob is our refuge the god of jacob is my refuge come behold the works of the lord what desolations he has made in the earth he maketh waters to cease unto the end of the earth and breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder he burneth the chariots in fire all weapons that are formed against you are burnt in fire today be still and know that I am the Lord. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. And the God of Jacob is our refuge. Today we are looking at the word of God on the subject, the great refuge for young, old, and all believers the, the great refuge for young believers for old believers for all believers he is your refuge today and you're going to find every need of your life will be supplied even today in jesus name every problem solved every challenge removed every difficulty melted every mountain taken away and all those things that have stood before you and your destiny the lord will take everything away today in jesus name in the new testament in hebrews chapter 6 new testament hebrews chapter 6 and here reading from verse 17 wherein god willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed age by an oath that by two immutable things in the which it was impossible for god to lie we have a strong consolation i have a strong consolation i have a strong confirmation i have a great confidence who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. There's a hope that is set before us. We're laying hold today. There's a destiny that is set before us, and we're laying hold today. And we come and we flee unto him, and we come to him, and he is our refuge. In verse 19, which hope? We have as an anchor of the soul, but sure and steadfast, and which entereth in into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered. Even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Today, as we look at the word of God, we see God as a refuge. We see God as the one that protects us and we see God as the one that is fulfilling the reason why he brought us into this world and he wants to fulfill a destiny in your life he will in Jesus name and you see we need to start from early parts of our lives for the children for the youths, for the young adults and for the adults for the fathers and the mothers and those who are very much aged it is not too late if you have not started today you are going to start there's going to be a new direction a new focus a new passion a new strength 
as God brings you to the fulfillment of why you are here in the world. So we're going to start from the early age, from young people, and then we come to middle age, and then we come to those who are far advanced in years. Everyone today, we're having the touch of the Lord in our lives in Jesus' name. Three points we're looking at. Number one, early conversion and consecration to God, our eternal refuge. We found people in the Bible that were converted early, transformed early, and it became useful in the kingdom of God very early. Point number one, early conversion and consecration to God. Early conversion and consecration to God, our eternal refuge. Point number two, earnest commitment and covenant with God, our everlasting redeemer. Earnest, not sluggish. Earnest, not lukewarm. Earnest, not cold. Earnest, not superficial. Earnest commitment and covenant with God, our everlasting redeemer. Point number three, earning confidence without counsel from God, our enduring rock. It's the rock, it's the refuge, it's the redeemer, it's the one that stands there, it's a shield, it's a protector, and we need to have confidence in him, and we need to have his counsel. Every step we take, because he knows what he made us for. He knows what he wants us to achieve. He knows the direction he wants our lives to take. And we need to consult him. And we need to inquire from him. And we need his counsel. We have confidence in God. And if we have counsel from him, your life will be fulfilled. Point number three, erring confidence without counsel from God our enduring rock. Number one is early conversion and consecration to God, our eternal refuge. 